Thank you. Good afternoon. This will go fast. Uh, I'm Monica Munoz Torres from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. And I'm here to give you a little bit of an update on our um, genome annotation editor tool. Uh, I've talked about this before here at BOSC, and if you were in the posters, you saw me in poster number 20 with our tool. This genome annotation editor, uh, it's a versatile genome, is a versatile browser and annotation tool built on top of JBrowse. We have the ability to show a large amount of data, uh, supporting data in experimental data tracks uh, to support those annotations and allow the users to go and manually alter the structure of the gene. So we don't do functional annotation, we do structural gene annotation. You can find me for more details about that. We're also on the web and I'll give you that URL later on. You've also seen me talking about the architecture before. It's a very complex architecture, but this is a five minute talk. So I'm not going to go very deep into this. I will tell you that it has three components in that we have a, a client that face forward to our users, of course. It's web-based, which makes it unique in comparison to other genome annotation editors. And uh, it is also makes it a real time tool for collaborators who are sitting throughout the world to work together into this one particular gene model without having to save their data or show uh, their data, carry it somewhere else before they can see it or share it with others. There is um, editing logic. It's a component of, uh, of the way Apollo accesses all of the information about these gene edits and sends it back to the server. So um, one of my primarily functions with the group is to actually make sure that our software is understanding the biology correctly and it's actually telling the truth when we conduct all of these manual annotations. Our server has a lot of updates. It is now uh, built using Grails and these things are uh, different from what it has been doing in the past few years. You can come find me for more details on this architecture. There are four new features that we are uh, talking about. We have uh, the ability to export and update a chat database. Gasp, I know that some of you thought it was there, but it wasn't and it's back. So I'm talking about it as a new feature. We also have the ability to annotate more than one organism from the same server at the same time. So you can see it in two different windows. Uh, we fixed a bug that was included in that. And you can also change the type of gene annotation that you're conducting from a gene to a pseudogene or to a non-coding RNA without having to reload a new gene into the annotation area. Uh, and lastly, we just started, let's put a handle with care sign on the right, uh, but we just started our integration with the Galaxy uh, platform. Apollo integrates into workflows very easily. In here, I'm just simply showing that you can bring your annotations, automated annotations from anywhere, uh, any type of tool that you've used, put them on, on JBrowse, and then Apollo allows you to do these annotations manually. And we you can communicate and integrate Apollo into your workflow using our web services client, uh, which is built on REST API. Many people have done it. The I5K workspace at the United States Department of Agriculture has already integrated, as well as these other tools, uh, vector base, the people from GenSAS and DNA Subway integrate Apollo into their workflow, and lately, uh, Galaxy. So, uh, I know that somebody recently asked what is Docker, and even though we're sitting down here, so it is simply a way to wrap uh, a complete data file system and, and have it work in any platform without having to integrate the OS as part of the, of the machine that you're building. Uh, so it just works everywhere. And, and so using Docker Compose, we have Perfect. We have actually managed to integrate Apollo within the Galaxy platform. It's just using the, the JBrowse Galaxy existent um, Docker instance that was built and then using the REST API talk to Apollo through web services. Uh, a lot of those details are explained in our documentation and, in, and these are the URLs. Our slides will be up because I know this is a very large URL that you probably won't be able to see. Uh, but to build it, so you just use Docker Compose and then it's based on collaborations with Eric Rashi at Texas A&M University. Um, and with that, I would like to say thank you. In the future, we're going to try to do this as a standalone instead of uh, the integrated between the Galaxy, existing Galaxy Docker. Just do it a Galaxy Apollo Docker build instead of having to talk to an external one. Uh, all right, that's it. I think I did my five minutes.
Thank you.